Ugh, I'm recording this outside because I don't have any lighting equipment. And so I need natural light and it's twilight and it's pretty and now all the neighbors are gonna be going, what the fuck is this joker doing? Oh well, enjoy. Anyway, so Hamnet, Hamnet, it's fantastic. Hamnet is a novel written by Maggie O'Farrell and it's on the list for the Women's Prize and I haven't read all of the books on the Women's Prize list but I think it should be a swift contender on the basis that I think it's one of the best English language novels I have read in a long long time. From before the beginning, before the book even starts, right in the blurb of the novel, Maggie O'Farrell makes it very very clear, you can't read that, I can, Maggie O'Farrell makes it very very clear that this is a book about the people surrounding a playwright in the late 16th century. This playwright, of course, is William Shakespeare. But at no point in the book is William Shakespeare named, not in any capacity. He's not called the Bard, he's not called Will, he's not called Bill, he's not called anything except the tutor, the groom, the husband, and the father. And that's it. And at first I was, I, I saw this as a kind of a gimmicky thing. I thought, okay, well, they're obviously, I see what Maggie Farrell is trying to do. She is trying to focus all of our attention on his family, not him, he's had enough attention. And I was wondering if this was gonna be a gimmick or something that would wear off, and it absolutely doesn't. It works to astonishing effect because what it makes you realize is that there are so many people surrounding Shakespeare who never got enough attention. Very important thing to know is that even though the novel is called Hamnet, it very much has a protagonist in Anne, Anne Hathaway, or Agnes as she was actually known, um, or that's her birth name. Agnes is our protagonist, but the entire book centers around Hamnet and the days leading up to his death. And Anne Hathaway is one of the most mysterious people within the biography and history of William Shakespeare. We really don't know that much about her or her family. And the novel plays on that. It is fiction. It is a fictional story about her and their family with a lot of accurate historical details weaved in in order to make it palatable and, and in any way connected to, to the real world. Now the book is about 360 pages and for the first 260 pages it is part one and part one splits itself between two different time periods. The one time period is very very short, it is a few days before Hamnet's death. This is not a spoiler, Hamnet died, we know this. But that time period is very very short and those chapters are shorter but they contain a lot more detail, they are slower, they are precision based, they are minute and they talk more about specific feelings in specific moments. Uh, it's, it's like photographs versus footage. Whereas the other part of part one, the chapters that it splits between, are these longer, longer chapters that, that can go on for 30, 40 pages. And those chapters are about William Shakespeare's uh, teenage life, him meeting Anne Hathaway, courting her, them having their first child, Susanna, and her getting pregnant with the twins, Hamnet being one of those twins. And those chapters move at a much faster pace, and they start off with the relationship between Will and his dad, John, who was a glover and a very successful businessman who went up and down, and all of this is pretty well documented, uh, especially if you watch the Michael Wood documentary on Shakespeare, which I'm currently watching, it's fantastic. I'm really into Shakespeare right now. I've been doing all of these Zoom plays with my friends in the States, which means time difference. Anyway, so I'm really into Shakespeare right now and so this book came along at a really good moment. Anyway, what I love about Hamnet is the fact that it reframes Anne, a woman that we know so little about, as a protagonist. And because we know so little about her, that means that Maggie O'Farrell gets to have some fun with her as a character. And at the beginning, frames her and her mother as these kind of forest witch characters. They are pseudo-alchemists, uh, herbalists, who have these strange ways about them according to the neighbors and according to the, the the people of the town and that's a lot of fun and Shakespeare falls in love with this woman with a kestrel right Anne Hathaway Agnes Hathaway is the woman with the kestrel she has this bird they think it's a hawk I think it's a hawk anyway she's strange and she's a kind of forest fairy type almost uh, a witch of the woods and I absolutely love this and this feeds into her as the story goes on because she starts to become kind of a spiritualist psychic type. There's a bit about halfway through the book without spoiling anything where she always had a sense, always could almost see perceptibly into the future that she was going to have two children and that 
her two children would be at the foot of her bed when she died. Now, as we know, she had three children and one of them dies. And when she says that, you kind of go, oh, you don't know what's coming. You have this ability to see the future in a sense, but you don't know what's happening. And despite the fact that she has this ability to see the future, she doesn't actually, uh, she isn't portrayed as any kind of superhuman. It, it's not a supernatural story, but it has this kind of fun bent about it that I really, really enjoyed. Hamnet, the titular character, is a very empathetic, very empathic, very sweet boy. And the story begins with him in his home and his sister, his twin sister, coming down with a fever. And she has the plague, which ultimately kills him. How she survives it and he doesn't is very, very interesting within the narrative, and I won't spoil it. Now, I said that the book is split into two parts. The second part is only the last hundred pages, and it is written very differently. There are no chapters in this part. These, the, this is one very, very quick hundred page chapter in and of itself. I can't really talk about what it's about because that would be spoiling so much of the book. But I almost preferred this part, part two, because it's quicker. I read it in a single sitting, um, 100, 110 pages, I think it is, and it is an aftermath of something, and it is about the lives of more people, and it has more of Will Shakespeare in it, uh, kind of the more familiar playwright, Bard Shakespeare, that we've come to romanticize. And what they do with his character is very interesting. And the whole thing about how Shakespeare is never named, whereas people like Susanna and John Shakespeare and Mary Shakespeare and Agnes and her mother and her stepmother Joan, these are all named people and people whose names I have very much internalized because of how much I love the book. Will Shakespeare is not named and this works really really well in the sense that it does allow us more freedom to explore the other people within his life but it also allows us to empathize more with him through them. We, we romanticize William Shakespeare, we obsess over him, we study not just his works, but his life and the things that led him to where he is. We watch documentaries, we study him in school, we read his plays, and so he has become this thing on a pedestal. But what's great about looking at him as this nameless man who is a very talented genius artist, his wife says as much, seeing him nameless and seeing him through her eyes and the eyes of his children and the eyes of his parents, we come to see him as a human being rather than a thing that exists on a pedestal. And that's so effective. So at first I, th I, I was skeptical about how they were going to handle his, his character. Um, I say they, I mean Maggie. Um, and she does it so tremendously because she does love this man and there is a perfect synchronicity between her wanting to give more worth and value and attention and love to the people around Shakespeare, the people that helped build him and the people who had lives of their own that are worth exploring and, and getting to know and falling in love with. And the fact that she loves Shakespeare and wants him to be seen through a more human lens. And that human lens is that of his wife and his children and his family. And and he is seen as, as uh, someone who is at fault, someone who is fallible, someone who at one point his father basically just says to him, go get a fucking job, you loser. And I'm sure his dad actually said that to him because so much of this is historically accurate. As you can tell, I really, really enjoyed this book. What's wonderful about it, most of all, is everything I've already said. The way that it's framed and the way that it handles these people and redraws them as fantastic and exciting fictional characters. And it's the fact that each one of them is so uniquely drawn and uniquely explored. You really get a sense for these characters, even though Hamnet himself doesn't actually have that many lines. Speaking of, Will Shakespeare himself barely speaks in the book. It's more the reaction to the things he says. He has lines of dialogue here and there, but they are sparse. It's mostly, it would describe it as, Will said this to his father, and then you get actual dialogue from his father within quotation marks, and it works really, really well. And it makes him a little bit passive, but in a good way, because it's not really about him, but it also is. I'm rambling. I really love this book. You really get a sense of the characters. Each one has been injected with a lot of love and a lot of detail. They are fully fleshed out, realized, dimensionalized characters. And I wasn't on board with this book when I first just heard about it. I, I didn't have that much excitement for it. Then I was bought into the hype a little bit and then I saw the Tinder Press cover and ended up getting it from Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights in Bath. Shout out to them, love that shop. And I 
Before I'd even held the book, I, I went from being someone who was skeptical about it to someone who was fully on board, probably because hype works really, really well, and suddenly I needed nothing more than to read this book, and what I did was read it in three days and fall desperately, desperately in love with this book. I loved this book so dearly. There is so much richness and joy to be found in these characters. And uh, when it comes to historical context, there isn't that much. And it, because it is very much on a minor, on a, uh, on a slimmed down small, almost gothic scale in the sense that it can be very claustrophobic within one house, one neighborhood, one family. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a tragedy and it is the tragedy of Hamnet's brief, brief life. I love it. I, I really love Hamnet. I, I can't <laughs> recommend this book enough. I wish it all the success in the world.